It is the first week of August. You know what that means. It is almost time for college football, and today we're going to be going over the 2023 Georgia Bulldog football schedule. Uh, in the last two episodes, we went over the Florida Gators and the Alabama Crimson Tide, so make sure you go check those out after this video is over. And without further ado, let's get into it. On week one, September 2nd, UT Martin will travel to the defending back-to-back -back national champions at 6 p.m. Eastern Time. UT Martin will be traveling to Georgia. This is another one of those opening season cupcake games that a lot of SEC teams usually get. I'm obviously going to pick Georgia here. If you are picking UT Martin, you're clinically insane. And <laughs> there's nothing else other than that. Uh, then week two, you have September uh, 9th. Ball State will be traveling to Athens, Georgia uh, at noon Eastern time. Uh, this is going to be a small little bit more challenging of an opponent than UT Martin, but this is still going to be another blowout, maybe a shutout win for Georgia. That is a, uh, a big, big back-to-back -back wins for Georgia, in my opinion. And then week three, September 16th, at 2.30 uh, Central, 3.30 Eastern on CBS, South Carolina will be traveling to Georgia in the, uh, Georgia's opening SEC matchup. In my opinion, this could be an interesting trap game. Uh, last year when these two uh, teams went at it, uh, Georgia actually ended up winning 48-7. to Beamer Ball did not show up, and that was in South Carolina, but... Um, this, you know, you you never know with the SEC. I'm going to pick Georgia again. I feel like this game's going to be closer than it was last season. This this game is most likely going to go to Georgia, but it could go any other way, just like any game could. But I'm going to pick Georgia for this one. And then week four, UAB, the Blazers of Alabama, Birmingham, uh, will be traveling to Athens. And this is kind of odd. Georgia has three of their first four weeks cupcake games. Now, I'm not calling UAB a cupcake, but I am. Because, you know, that's, that's UAB. I mean, they're not SEC. They're not Big Ten. They're not Big 12. They're, I think they're the Sun Belt or the CUSA, one or the other. I can't remember. I think it's the Conference USA. Um, this is going to be another win for Georgia. Uh... I feel like uh, UAB is just going to show up, maybe play good for half a quarter, and I think they'll get tired, and I think Georgia will end up winning. And then in week five, September 30th, you have Georgia in their first away game traveling to Auburn. Uh, this could be another one of those really interesting games, and uh, I do have Georgia winning this one. I think Georgia is just too strong for a first-year head coach in uh, Hugh Freeze in Auburn to defeat. I don't care where this game could be taking place. It could take place in Auburn, uh, Athens. It could take place on the moon for all I care. Georgia's going to win 100 out of 100 wherever they're at. And then week six, October 7th, uh, Kentucky will travel to Georgia uh, in a SEC East matchup. This is... Uh, <laughs> I think that this game is going to be another one of those blowouts. Now, when Kentucky and Georgia faced last year, it was a lot closer than people expected. Georgia only won 16-6. to The passing game, this was Stetson Bennett's worst game. And although Stetson Bennett is now in the NFL, he won't be returning. I think this is proof as to how well uh, the passing defense could do. I mean... Uh, Kenny McIntosh was their leading rusher in this game last year, but this was also their best game for one single rusher. I do believe Georgia's going to pick up the win here, as they always have and they always will. Uh, and then in week number seven, yep, week number seven, uh, Georgia will travel to Vanderbilt October 14th. This is another one of those... SEC East games, and when they played last year, Georgia just absolutely demolished them 55 to nothing. And it was kind of expected that this would happen. And there's nothing you can really do about it except say that I think this, this, this is going to be the same exact turnout. 
I think Georgia's going to win again. They're going to win big, and I think this could be another shutout, but this time in Nashville. Then you have the bye week, and then on October 28th, you have the neutral site game in Jacksonville against the Florida Gators, uh, 3.30 Eastern time on CBS. Uh, I discussed this game in the Florida one. I do think that they're going to absolutely just demolish Florida in this one. I think that they're going to demolish almost their entire schedule. Um, I think Georgia's going to end up winning a pretty, pretty good uh, I think that they're going to be able to stop the Florida run game really, really well because last season when they faced off against the Gators, the Gators, this was their worst game rushing-wise last season when they only picked up about, uh, yeah, only 53 yards as their leading rusher. I do think that they're not going to be able to switch over to Graham Mertz for the passing game in this case. I feel like that this game is just going to fall apart and fall apart quick for the Gators. I do have Georgia winning by uh, three-plus scores. And then the next week you have uh, Missouri traveling to Athens in Georgia's homecoming game, November 4th. Uh, Last year, this was the big game that everybody was talking about after uh, the game was over. Missouri almost beat Georgia. This was a really interesting game as Georgia only won 26-22. There was a lot of close games for Georgia last season, especially the first half of the game against Kent State, then the Missouri game, then the Kentucky game. I do have um I do have Georgia coming out of this one as the victor. It'll be in Georgia. This is probably going to be another 3 plus touchdown game or scoring game. Uh, continuing their undefeated streak, I do have Georgia winning. And then the next week, November 11th, uh, Ole Miss will travel to Athens. And this is uh, a lot of home games for Georgia this year. I think they probably have the easiest schedule in the SEC. I see maybe two or three interesting games this season. Um, And I don't think this is going to be one of them. I do think that Ole Miss is going to take a step down as compared to where they were last season. So I do have Georgia winning this one. Uh, Lane Kiffin's not going to be able to pass or run through that defense. Although, you know, everybody talked about, you know, wanting Lane Kiffin to run the ball when he was at Alabama. Running the ball, passing the ball, whatever, it doesn't matter. Uh, Georgia's going to pick up the win here. And then a huge rematch uh, to end the SEC matchups for Georgia. Uh, Georgia will be traveling to Knoxville, Tennessee on November 18th. This is probably going to be the biggest SEC East matchup of the season. Uh, I do think Alabama LSU will be the biggest um, on the West. Nothing on the East will be Georgia, Tennessee. I, I do have I do have Georgia picking up the win here again. Uh, I do think that they will. Uh, it, it'll be close. It'll be a lot closer than last season. I think this is going to be a night, a night game. Um, I do think that the fans will be crazy in Knoxville. I think this is going to be a less than one score game. This could be only be decided by a few points, like the game against Missouri was, or the game against Kentucky. But I do have Georgia coming out of this one with the victory, and then. In week 14, I believe this is, uh, maybe 13, I can't tell with bye weeks anymore, uh, they travel to Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta to play against Georgia Tech. Last season when they played against Georgia Tech, they defeated the Yellow Jackets 37-14. to And of course, that was another decisive victory, and I do have Georgia picking up another decisive victory, ending their regular season. At 12 and 0, I do have uh, them going to the SEC championship, and uh, I do have them winning the SEC championship, and then I do have them winning the national championship again. I think that Georgia is going to win the three peat again this year, and I think Georgia is going to be that new top dog. I think Saban's going to leave Bama sometime very, very soon. And I do think that Georgia is going to be that next top dog. I mean, Kirby Smart was under the Nick Saban coaching tree and then, you know, left to go to Georgia. And it took him a couple of seasons to, you know, get to this. I mean, they were really good for a while. 
you know, I think they had a playoff appearance. They had that Rose Bowl game against Oklahoma, which went to like triple overtime, I believe. But they lost in the national championship. But now I do have Georgia, uh, after winning back-to-back national championships, I do think that they three-peat. And they finished the season 15-0 and again. So uh, thank you guys for watching this predictions video. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, let me know what teams you want me to see uh, do a prediction of. And I will do that. Uh, and I will see you guys uh, in the next video.